This isn't your dad's Google. I want to break. Like, remember before AI when you had to type to search for things? Google's thermostat has been completely redesigned to look like a Pixel Watch. That's why I love the Google Pixel Watch. YouTube is what I live and breathe. Take them all away. I don't care. I just want YouTube. It might have begun as search, but it now has the largest collection of data in the world, devices, chips, cloud computing, AI models, and an AI interface. Everything a company needs to dominate the modern era. Google, out of all the names we talk about, still has the biggest moat and still is probably the most interesting in terms of valuation. Business units so large, integration so deep, that splitting them up would be nearly impossible, despite the government's push to do just that. As we sit here at the next technological inflection point, it's extremely important that we protect the competitive process. I'm Deirdre Bosa, and this week on Tech Check, breaking up Google is hard to do. The mega caps are too big to split. Google is ramping up business as usual in the face of a potential breakup of its company. It's the biggest update we've ever made to the Pixel family. A flashy event showing off new smartphones, new AI features, all as the Justice Department considers dismantling the tech giant, among other options, after Google lost a huge lawsuit. A U.S. judge rules that Google illegally monopolized the search market by spending billions of dollars on exclusive deals. Alphabet on pace for a sixth straight week of losses. That's actually its longest losing streak ever. It's now down 17% from its all-time high last month, and now that Google's on the losing end of that antitrust case, the DOJ is considering a breakup. A judge finding that the company has an illegal monopoly in the way that it runs its online searches. The DOJ, it wants a remedy that will level the playing field, and breaking the company up into different pieces would be particularly damaging in the age of AI, where data is gold. The more of it, the better, and the more integrated, the better. But that's also key to why Google is too big to split. Its services are deeply interconnected, relying on shared infrastructure, data, and technology. With a company like this, I think that it's important to recognize that when things do get broken up, there's going to be a lot of agreements that will be quickly put in place that would be probably uh, infuriate regulators. But ultimately, I think the substance of how Google functions would remain relatively unchanged. Splitting Google up would be technically expensive and complicated. It could disrupt user experiences that people depend on and ultimately lead to less innovation and higher costs. And as we've seen with past antitrust action and enforcement, it can get bogged down for years in appeals and often the technology moves a lot faster than the regulators. Nowadays, we call the largest tech companies in the world big tech for a reason. Their enormous size, influence, even perception in the public, it brings to mind the heyday of towering industries. Big oil, big railroad, big tobacco. For technology companies, it comes down to vertical integration. They control more and more of the process, from hardware to software to services, so they don't need to rely on third parties. This makes a platform or an ecosystem that is hard for other smaller companies to actually break into. Different ways of describing that business model, but it all comes down to that integration. Take Google's latest hardware event, Tech Stack. Tech Stack. Tech Stack. Tech Stack. Or Ecosystem. 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 Put simply, it's different businesses that all feed into one another in a virtuous cycle. Take Apple. The company made its name selling iPhones and computers, but it's slowly been building up its services business, including the App Store, iCloud, and Apple Music, a unit that brought in more than $23 billion in its last quarter. That alone, almost the size of Delta Airlines. Apple also invested billions into making their own custom chips instead of relying on another company and created their own operating system. Microsoft started with PCs and office software, now a huge player in the cloud. Amazon has ads and a massive streaming platform plus AWS. And for all of them, the age of generative AI is supercharging their ecosystems and positioning them as continued winners. At Google's annual hardware event, executives, they didn't even get to the new line of Pixel phones until 25 minutes into the keynote. That's because the event wasn't actually about hardware. It was a showcase to investors that Google has finally gotten a grasp on their AI offerings and can vertically integrate it into all their businesses. Chips. You'll see lots of new AI experiences today that put those TPUs to work for you. Phones. Pixel is our platform for showcasing the very best of Google AI. Operating system. This Android ecosystem even has its own custom AI model. AI assistant. Check my calendar and see if I'm free when she's coming to San Francisco this year. It all amounted to even more integration, making Google too big to split. 
But as we saw with Microsoft in the 90s and the early 2000s, simply the threat of a breakup, that can be enough to hurt innovation in the long term. Time, money, and talent, that all went towards legal defense and compliance instead of new products. The company was more cautious in its business strategies. The stock, it essentially went nowhere for a decade. So even if tech companies today are too big to split, they aren't immune to increasing regulatory pressure. And what happens to Google, that could have implications for other big tech companies facing lawsuits of their own, like Apple, Amazon, and Meta. The idea that 20 plus years after Microsoft's landmark case, the Department of Justice can successfully bring a monopolization case against big tech, well, that suggests a more nimble, aggressive regulatory environment. Wall Street, meanwhile, has warmed up to breakups, or as they call it, unlocking value. It's the idea that a company, its assets, or specific business units may be undervalued or not fully appreciated by the market, and that through certain actions, like a breakup, the company can realize or unlock that hidden value. If the market thought that they were going to be broken up, the stock would be up 10%. Analysts have long argued that Amazon's cloud unit would be worth more if it was spun off. AWS is doing phenomenally well at very high margins. The entire value of Amazon can be justified by just AWS. Or that separating reality labs from Meta would reduce the risk and impact of heavy losses on its core social media business. One research firm took a closer look at the implications of breaking up Google, and they found something similar that in fact, Wall Street is massively undervaluing Alphabet and seemingly assigning no value to Google's cloud and hardware businesses. So the argument goes, spinning out some divisions would force analysts to recrunch the numbers and could supercharge its value in the market. In an era where data is king and AI is the future, Google's deep integration across its ecosystem, that makes it a powerhouse that might just be too big to break.